Hello and welcome to all you Librans, dear Librans, welcome for your uh, monthly horoscope for uh, Sept no, 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 not September, August. I wanted to do a video of August and September all at once, but of course, um, I knew that a lot, I know that a lot of people would not like just one um, a horoscope for two months. So basically, I'm going to explain now for you Librans in general what's going on in August, but a tiny little bit of September as well because it's very linked with each other. And um, so, what's going on for the Librans? Um, there are tr three things going on um, basically. I've since I've been doing videos I've been integrating fixed stars and again this month I'm going to do that because Mars and Saturn in your third house of communication is coming together on the fixed star Antares I'm going to explain that then I'm going to explain that huge emphasis on your 12th house but in a very benefic way and last but not least I'm going to talk about Antision so let's get started um, First of all, maybe the not so easy stuff that is going on in your third house. Now, Mars and Saturn were there already in uh, March, April and May. So this is not new. So Mars and Saturn are very close to each other. They're going to meet up even. And uh, it's on that fixed star Antares, which is a fixed star about endings. So um, are you going to end connections or whatever? No. It means endings always means new beginnings. Now, on a collective level, this is way more heavy, that, that fixed star on Taurus, but, you know, we're doing astrology for individuals here. So we have to put our feet on the ground and try to focus on what we can do as an individual with our free will. Now, Mars and Saturn together, when I see that in the third house, sometimes I see that when writers are really working very, very hard for that book to um, uh, to write and uh, it doesn't come easily. It's, it's like, you know, I have to do that structure, that discipline of one page a day. And then at the end of the year, I have 365 pages. Something like that is happening with your mind, you Librans. Because those two planets are coming together. And maybe there is something that you really, truly want to understand for once. And then you want to let go of. I think it's, it's something like that for you Librans. It's like a new way of understanding things that is coming for you. But first, there need to be that super focus on something. That super focus on how you communicate. How you structure your mind. So, um, and Saturn is a bit heavy. So watch out, not, not thinking too, too heavy, too serious, but um, at its best, it's really concentrated mental energy. That's at its best. So if you need to do something for work or a project, or as I said, writing, speaking, teaching, and it demands a lot of energy, great, because this means hard work here in that uh, little area there. So uh, of course, uh, steam can come out if you work too hard there. So don't get frustrated if you're not getting everything in that little mind box. So it's a lot about your perspective. Don't make it rigid. But um, the positive thing of this energy is mastering, mastering what you are focusing on, on the, the piece of information that, that is coming towards your way. So again, you, you can use this in a positive way in a, or in a negative way. In a negative way, it's really you being, but I don't think that's going to happen. You're a Libran. I mean, they want peace um, for sure. But in a negative way, this is really harsh discussions. On a, on a positive way, as I said, it's ma it's, it's thinking, thinking twice before you say something and it's mastering your energy. It's, it's mastering your ego, basically, when it comes towards your communication. So it's a very mature way of speaking and messaging with others, uh, getting your message out there in a very controlling way and mastering yourself, which is, which is very good, of course. Um, so that's that. On the other hand, there's a lot of energy going on in the 12th house. So there's a lot of letting go for you. Jupiter has been there for a long time, but now lots of planets enter Virgo, which is Venus, which is and, and Mercury. Uh, so Venus, the planet of love and, and values, which is your ruler. Um, so you're there in that 12th house. Jupiter there as well already. Um, and then Mercury there. 
uh, so your thoughts and also the sun later on. So a lot in that 12th house. Um, but it's not negative energy at all. Especially the last week. The last week of the month can be super... Do something that helps you to relax. And uh, you will really, really um, enjoy it. Like two times more than normal. Why? Because the 12th house is the house of relaxation. It's the house of letting go. And now Venus and Jupiter conjunct each other around, I think it's around the 27th. So do something that 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 helps you to let go of things and even enjoy. Enjoy that process. On another level, it could mean that the love story is uh, maybe you are single and you have an eye on someone. And there is something bubbling there, and but it's a bit behind the scenes. Um, necessarily it doesn't have to be a bad thing, you know, if you're just uh, thinking of something and putting your strategy out there and waiting for the perfect moment when Venus comes into your sign, which will be next month, and then show what you're all about. So it can be a bit daydreaming as well about someone and uh, being a bit insecure at the same time. Why? All the planets that enter especially in the beginning of the month let's say the two first three weeks of the month all those planets in uh, Virgo are bumping into Saturn and, and Neptune and the Saturn Neptune square and thank God it's over end of September but it's still on it's about insecurity because um, and the Libra especially the single Librans who are thinking about starting with someone and, and, and they're not quite sure, you know, that, that phase. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can make you crazy, right? That one week you think, yeah, that's it. That's him or that's her. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's totally, totally fantastic. And then next week you think, how on earth am I going to make this practical? How on earth am I going to make this happen? You know, that kind of energy is quite on during the month of um, of August. But in September, eclipses happen there. So you will, you will find uh, clarity for sure. But not necessarily there around, um, uh, around uh, August time. Now, last but not least, this Antician. What is that all about? Now... Uh, uh, signs always have an antician. So for Libra, for instance, your antician sign is Pisces. For Virgo, because a lot of planets come into Virgo, for Virgo, its antician sign is Aries. And who's there in Aries? Uranus. So there's a link between Uranus in your opposite signs of, of relationships. And what is going on in your 12th house as well? What is antician? Explain very easily. You've got 30 degrees in a sign. And when you have like, for instance, a planet transiting in Virgo in your 12th house on one degree, one degree of Virgo, then you divide 30 degrees minus one, which is 29. And that's the point, Antician point in Aries, 29 degrees and so on. So when you've got those planets transiting all of Virgo around seven degrees, its antician point will be 23 degrees of Aries, and there's Uranus there. So what does it mean? Antician points mean that they have a lot in common under the surface. So everything that I just mentioned about your 12th house there and that positive energy that's going on there, that is a bit insecure, yes, every now and then, but it's very positive with letting go has to do with relationships as well and new newness in relationships and liberation of relationships. So some of you are going to end actually relationships. Um, not all of you because, uh, of course, but some of you are ready to, for doing that and it gives you free energy and, it, and, and you, are, you are able to do that because it's never an easy thing to do. And some of you are going to start new relationships, which is very unique refreshing, exciting. So um, uh, whatever is going on in your 12th house, that has a flavor of Uranus, uh, again, which is very liberating. So that's beautiful as well. Uh, that is, a, it's not negative energy uh, at all. So, um, so have a bit of daydreaming, but not too much, of course. Uh, and you won't have too much because Saturn is going to uh, correct that immediately. Um, have fun as always um, think about what you say twice before you say it and uh, I think you're gonna have a very interesting month 
So um, thanks for watching and see you next month. Bye bye.